History of Voting Machine? In colonial America, voters recorded their choices by placing balls, coins, bullets or beans in a container. Paper ballots did not come into use until around 1800. At first, paper ballots were usually supplied by the political parties, and each party used a different color. The voter would typically hold his ballot up in the air for all to see which color he chose. Municipalities also used voice votes, where the voter simply spoke the name of his candidate or answered, yeah, or, nay. Some communities in the United States continued to hold elections based on voice votes until after the Civil War. A new system of paper ballots was first used in the Australian state of Victoria in 1856. The ballot was made from a uniform size, weight and color of paper, and it listed all the candidates from any parties. Voters marked their choices by checking a box next to their preferred candidate's name. Then, they dropped the ballot into a sealed ballot box. This became known as the Australian ballot, and it was adopted in the United States in the 1870s. The Australian ballot obviously offered confidentiality that the earlier voting systems lacked. The famed inventor Thomas Edison took out a patent on a mechanical voting machine in 1869, but his device was never used. Another inventor, Jacob H. Myers, developed a similar machine, which became the first mechanical voting device ever used in a U.S. election when it was adopted by the city of Lockport, New York, in 1892. Several companies developed and marketed similar voting machines, which were known as mechanical lever devices. They were widespread across the United States by 1930. More than half the nation voted on lever machines by the 1960s. The voter enabled the machine by pulling a lever that also closed the privacy curtain around the booth. To mark candidate choices, the voter pulled down pointers next to his or her selections. The pointers moved counter wheels inside the machine. The machine reset every time the curtain lever was raised, and at the end of the day, its counter wheels revealed how many votes had been cast for each candidate on the ballot. These machines were thought to reduce the possibility of ballot tampering, though apparently those inclined to rig elections still found ways to do so. Two more voting systems were developed by entrepreneurs in the 1960s. The first person to develop a voting machine using computer punch cards was a Mr. Martin Coyle, who marketed his machine in Ohio beginning in 1960. A University of California political science professor, Joseph P. Harris, took out a patent for a punch card voting system called Votomatic in 1963. Computer giant international business machines bought the rights to manufacture Votomatic machines in 1965. Close to 40% of all votes in the 1996 presidential election were cast on punch card machines. A second method of recording votes, using optical scan equipment, was also developed in the 1960s. In the late 1990s, almost a quarter of all registered voters used some kind of optical scanning machine. These are similar to the readers used for grading standardized tests. The voter marks his or her vote by filling in a dot or completing an arrow with a number 2 pencil, and the machine reads and tallies the pencil marks. A smaller, but growing segment of the population votes on machines known as direct recording electronic, DRE. This is essentially the electronic version of the mechanical lever system. By touching keys or buttons, voters enter their choices into an electronic memory in the machine. It tallies its votes automatically, and a district using these machines can have its election results in as little as half an hour. Many DRE machines use buttons next to a printed ballot. Others use a liquid crystal display to show the ballot, and the voter can push buttons or touch the display. Using these machines is similar to using an automatic teller machine. Whatever the system the device uses, all voting machines have similar constraints. They are used, for the most part, only twice a year, and in the meantime they sit in storage. They need to be simple to operate, and also simple to maintain and repair. Relatively untrained and unskilled poll workers or election administrators need to be able to set them up and keep them working during polling and yet they need to be highly reliable. In general, large municipalities buy more advanced equipment first, and the technological gains trickle down to smaller cities as they buy used equipment from their bigger neighbors.